Now I've been driving somewhere else, and if you drive a regular path, <laughs> True. Right, and next thing you know, you're like, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Bro? Like, it's a, it's an autopilot thing. It's I think, true, well, I think yeah. you have to fight against the autopilot, right? You have to. And the problem yeah. is, is that the social media and the phones and stuff, they contribute to that. So it's not like I'm like I'm anti phone and anti this stuff. It's just that I have to be mindful that this stuff contributes to this autopilot, to which I don't want to do. I want to be more conscious yeah. and present with what the fuck I'm doing. So I have to figure out how do I how do I utilize this stuff in a way that doesn't open. Trust me, and it, it you know that's 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 the deal. And if you ain't got not, in my opinion, if you don't have some type of spiritual anchorage, yeah. something that you fucking that, that is greater than this stimulation that you get, if you don't have something mm. like that, he fucking you fighting it, you fighting the waves, brother. You don't hold back the ocean. You gotta hold back the ocean, bro. You know what I mean? Like the motherfucker. <laughs> and you don't have it. It's true, man. Uh, it's funny. Uh, Crazy Mad just popped in and says, uh, "What stream did I just jump into?" And Clayton was talking about milk, man. You know what, Anthony? He kind of like brings back my old school streams back when I used to talk a lot of shit. It makes me want to do a show with you on Button, bro. Seriously, man. We could talk for it. Just come on, just start talking, fucking. <laughs> You brought fucking your brothers like, uh, what did he say? <laughs> you know, did, did, just did, did this morning ever really happen? <laughs> yeah. And then he said, that happens to me all the time, man. Yeah, yeah, that happens to me all the time. And then my wife thinks I'm nuts. Yeah, it's, I think it's because honestly, I'm just not paying attention. My mind is on other things. I'm thinking about something else. Well, I, I think I, that's what it is. I will say this too. I think that. Especially when you know what we're, we're, we're doing now, because I'm telling you somebody else to do it. They, you know, it's like there are days when I have to go do my, my other gig, and, and like that's all I do all day. Mm. It's like there is a weird piece about it because when I'm doing it, that's all I'm doing. And I realize that when I'm doing that, and, I, and this is the, the, the task, and I'm doing the task, that's all there is. But when I'm home or when I'm not doing that, my brain is going, okay, campaign, uh, volume two, uh, finish this drawing, uh, finish mm -hmm. this cards over here. I need to meet, see how many conventions are coming out. I need to schedule those guys. Um, oh shit, I gotta finish this commission over here. Um, how am I gonna put my website together? Do I have new products that need to go on the website? Uh, it, it, it's just like, and that's the problem is that it's, I'm build, trying to build something. So I don't yeah. have this time where I'm just sitting there going, Mm. Right? That's tough, yeah, but, I, but the problem is, is I have to make that time because if I don't, then I end up, you know, pulling the milk out twice and shit on the counter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to just sit down, even if it's 10 minutes. And, sh and, and I've done this with this guy, I've done this weird meditation, right? And he, he told us, look, yeah, yeah. this is what you want to do. This is what you want to mm. sit down. And he goes, you have to understand that ahead of time that you, you're, you're going against what the body and the brain does. The body and the brain need to fix. So you're being still and trying not to think. He's like, so you're, 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 you're going against it. He goes, so the concept is, is, he goes, imagine that there's this stage and there's a guy with a balloon and he's got a push button. He goes, what you're doing is, is well, every time these thoughts come onto the stage, you're just having the guy go and just, just push them off. And you try to be quiet, keep the stage clean as long as possible, then another fall will come and you clean that off. He goes, he said, listen, he goes, every now and then you'll come to this place and all the thoughts will be gone. And then you'll have the guy just walk to the edge of the stage and jump off. And there's nothing on the stage anymore. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna try this. Um, yeah. I haven't quite had him jump off the stage yet, but I'm, you know, but it's, 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 it's just it. it's just that to kind of well it, and for me yeah. what I find is is it just and not that it, it you know some days work better than others but it, every time I do it I at least you know what I mean like it comes down and it's like hey man you, you're pretty blessed to be where you are brother take it easy you know what I mean gratitude and take it easy right gratitude and humility specifically to me it's like. Well, brother, you should probably be either in a cage or a box. You know what I mean? Or one. You're doing pretty good today. You know what I mean? I, I, I tell people all the time, if I was really 
reflective of my gratitude as we walk around the gummy and making people all day. You know, like, hey, yeah. how you doing? All right. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. exactly. But I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh man, I, I think it's so important to be grateful with, for what you've got, man. I've seen people where enough is just never enough for them, and it's like, they're so happy, man. It's like, man, I, you don't even realize what you've got. Anyway, you know, it's funny, man, because I feel like each of these conversational threads could go for two hours on their own. So let's move on to like, the other the other aspect of what we're here for which is arguably one of the most important things today that we needed to get through and that is uh the long shots uh which is your new campaign and uh what's different about this campaign is there is a little bit of a story behind it um which I, i'm personally a little bit acquainted with i know the the basic uh dot points but, uh, and, and getting into it as deep as you want, but how did this Long Shots campaign actually mm -hmm. came about? What, and what is it exactly? Uh, let me say, uh, hail to Sugar Chris. <laughs> Tell him that I wanna, uh, we, need to, we need to schedule something for us. We need to put one of them yeah. some of the guys on there so we can uh, Sugar cut Chris. up a little bit. Hopefully you wear your red dress for us, but you know, mm -hmm. no promises. Uh, the long shots. This, this seems so like I, I hate to be like this, but it seems so much not as inspiring as the conversation that we just had. So I know, I this know, is the, <laughs> we should have with this um, Okay, so, so so why isn't it as inspiring? Let's talk about that. This isn't this isn't something right. you're happy to talk this about. This is right? well, you know, because it because it's it's it rep this represented something, right? It really did. It, it, we got together and it was a group of guys, a group of creators, and a distributor. And the idea was is that we were going to, um, the distributor had landed a commercial retail um, mm -hmm. deal. And by the time I came into it, there was already five, let's see, there was, there was nine books total. There was already, I think, seven books on the table when I walked. So this is yeah, promising. You were excited. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because there was the prom. There was it was promising because this was an ability to be a part of something that would shift um, the independent market, right? In a way that would marvel that shifted Marvel and comics in general when they went to the newsstand. And so we were like, well, cool. This is this is a whole different market. Could and be then, a game changer. And then for hundred percent, and then for me and Marcus. What was cool was we would then we could then utilize this to funnel talent into this thing here, and you know we were like, well, this would be great, you know, because then you have great projects and great creators who have great looking stuff that not everybody can get on the big shows and making the big money, yeah, uh, right. even though their product is is big product. Um, and this was a way to to then funnel some of this through there and be like, wow, this is this is really cool, man. And um, so we were all on board, we we're all partners and whatnot, and we started to kind of move forward with all of it. And there was a signing and all this kind of stuff. We mm -hmm. had Harvard, New Jersey, and we all kind of we went got the first set of books printed. Uh, it was uh, nine books, three thousand a piece, twenty-seven thousand books. Um, and Spencer's the, the retail commercial retailer was going to pick them up, bring them to Egg Harbor, which supposedly they did. It was eighteen thousand. They got bought to Egg Harbor. Wow! So we were supposed to go to Egg Harbor, meet the corporate, uh, do some signings and stuff like that. And it was when we got to Egg Harbor that I think all of us started to be like something, something, something is not right. What yeah. told you that something wasn't right? They didn't uh -huh. meet up with you? Or? So you end up, so we go. The, the idea was we were going to go eat lunch, and then we were going to meet in Spencer's parking lot at 3 o'clock, and then we were going to go in Spencer's building. Awesome. Now, I don't know jack shit about corporate. I'm a street guy, I don't know shit about corporate. After yeah. the fact, everyone tells me, like, yeah, man, corporate does not make million dollar deals on, at 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. They just don't do it. Right. And uh, which I don't know any of this. So we go to this parking lot and we're like, all right, cool, man, let's get ready to go in. And he 
gets a phone call and the rep is like, oh, I had an emergency, a medical emergency. Um, perhaps I can make it out there later. And so we're like, okay, we'll, we'll leave down the street this restaurant and nothing ever happens. So then it's like, oh, I'm gonna meet you guys tomorrow at this comic book shop in New York, some little comic book shop that we did a signing in in his basement. And it was like, I will meet you over there with a the contract. Well, she never showed up. But oh, she, shit. but she emailed the contract, you know, and, I, and then it just became this thing where That's we weird. all went to Egg Harbor, New Jersey to meet these people and no one met anyone. And it was just kind of like, what? And then after the fact, people are like, yo, bro, like, you don't have one person on a million dollar deal. It's like, oh, this person is sick. Cool. We got three other people. Hey, guess what? You guys came out here? Come on inside. How about some water? How about some coffee? Yeah, <laughs> How about yeah. a Danish or a donut? Anything. Yeah, should have been. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> something. And none of that was ever, you know, so that's when yeah. we started getting suspicious and we weren't, you know, then it was like, well, we're not showing out any more money. And then it slowly <laughs> fell apart. One of the creators went into a COVID coma, then the other one went into a COVID coma. They come out of the coma was like, well, all right, what's going on? Is this deal mm -hmm. going? And we're like, yeah, bro, this is bullshit. And then Shit. You know, we, we confronted the guy and finally it was like, we want our books back. And that started to be kind of dicey. And then the oh. owner's wife went public and said, we would like more part of Gotta go public. And then we kind of started going public, and then B Rose and uh, Phoenix Animation got involved. Then they got Dojo Kun involved with Dojo and his day job as a product examiner. So oh, wow. Yeah, just, but it's like a, I swear, it was like a, the way it unfolded was just like a soap opera. That's a, so they wind up having a show with Luke Stone on, then the distributor shows up with his wife, and then that's oh. where uh, Maddie Fowler was on there, and they start with this whole. Well, I'm driving, listening to the whole thing, and I'm fucking going berserk because I'm way out in the sticks and I don't got no fucking service. Yeah, so I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to get on on my phone, I'm driving, and I'm and I'm like, all right, bro. So this is the deal. Well, but it was dropping. I'd be like, no. Uh, finally, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I find a McDonald's. And I'm like in front of the McDonald's, hooking to their Wi-Fi and shit, man. And I'm standing in front of McDonald's, fucking yelling and shit. And then I don't realize there's actually employees still in there. They're looking at me like this dude's on crack and shit. And <laughs> that's when I had my epiphany, man. Like we were talking, and the dude's like, I, I got paperwork, man. Like I can show you the steel was real. And I was just like, you fucking think I'm pissed off now? I was like, let me find out this deal was fucking real. And you fucked it up because you're incompetent. I said, if this was a fake deal, I'm out so much money. Gotcha. Okay? Yeah. If this was real, I'm out hundreds of thousands of dollars. I said, so you think I'm pissed off now? I said, let me find out this motherfucker was real. You better hope this was bullshit. And then it came out, oh, there was a third party B2B business. And it was just like, it, it just began this bullshit. No one knew about it. He never told anybody because he had to sign an NDA, you know, it's just a bunch mm -hmm. of bullshit. And so we were at this place where we were just like, look, bro, fuck this, man. We got, we got nine books, bro. We got two guys who, one guy's got, I think it's, it's possibly bills like a million dollars. That's crazy. I mean, it's like, let's, let's get a, let's get a, a Kickstarter, a, a crowdfunder together and let's crowdfund this. We can make a little money. And more importantly, mm -hmm. we can get the books that we wanted to get out to people into people's hands, man. Right. You know, so it's like whatever, whatever. It was just like, you know, it's like oh, we don't need we don't need to make more than because we charge twenty five for the nine. It's like two fifty a book, close to two fifty a book. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, bro, cool, bro. That's all. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's all good. It's a win win because the books are just sitting there anyways. This mm -hmm. way, you're getting paid for the books, you're getting the books in, in people's hands, and you're potentially getting new customers, man. Beautiful. You know, so, Beautiful. Like, so, so you control. <laughs> correct, correct. You have, we have the product now. So we have all the books. All the books are printed. They're ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So you found the books and you built them back. Yeah, which I don't think they ever left. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so well, that's the merchandise least. back. We got yeah. the merchandise back. That would have been scary if you didn't get those back either. Would have been just screwed. But. You started this campaign, you and the guy got together by the looks of it. It's not mm -hmm. just your book on here, it's actually everybody who, all the creators who are involved by the looks of it. 
Is yes. that right? That's correct. It's like nine titles, ultimately nice. seven creators. So this is almost like a, a, a second chance. If people had missed, you know, like God's Hand, for Correct. example, or the, the other books from these uh, talented creators in previous campaigns, now they can basically pick them up all in one fell swoop and add a bunch of new books to their, you know, comics, yeah, comics book collection. That's pretty Please sweet. Got yeah, because you also have books like uh, Shield of the Interceptor, which uh, is done by J.D. Rosario, uh, which is an interesting concept because it's like basically what if Excalibur was a set and was so, a, sh a sword and a shield, and they just mm -hmm. got separated. But what's even cool about that is that Russ Leach drew that book. No one's ever seen it. You know what yeah, I mean? So you have, you have yeah. stuff like that, that that's in there. I think he has extra pages and the only guy can save us. I put in extra pinups and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, that's what we try to do, too. So Yeah, for sure. So, so how important is it that this campaign does well? You know, because I know that, uh, you know, it sounds like a lot of you creators actually put uh, a lot on the line. Correct. And, and that uh, there was a huge risk involved. And now this maybe may this be, is yeah, kind of like the silver be, lining. Yeah. This may be a business faux pas uh, for myself, but I, you know, I'm, I look at all of this as laying out for myself, as the New Orleans word it means extra. Um, yeah, so looking at the right side. For me, it's, it's, for me, yeah, for me, it's extra. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is all just this is all cake. Yeah. Now, for someone like Luke Stone, it's a lot. For someone like Randy mm -hmm. Zimmerman, it's a lot. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because these guys, again. Randy, I think, fronted up for three books. You know, right. Luke, again, Luke, if you want a story, Luke's story of Luke got COVID and told Luke, listen, bro, you need to go on a ventilator. Luke asked yeah. the guy, like, you know, what's my chances if I don't go on a ventilator? He says zero. He said, what's my chances if I go on a ventilator? He says 5%. Oh, shit. So Luke Stone goes into this, and this is what he says. He tells us this. He's like, I'm going, they're wheeling me back. I got a 95% chance to die. He goes, and I'm telling my wife, listen, make sure you get the files together. Make sure you send them the vet. Make sure you get all these things done because this, this deal is going to feed you and the kids. This is oh, what man. this dude is, That's that, I was say, this is what this dude's thinking as he's going in. So when he comes to finally, right, like two and a half months later, it's like, uh, all right, man, what's going on? <laughs> Where's the dispensers? And it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, that was all bullshit. That was Gosh. all fake. You know what I mean? So those dudes, bro, those dudes took it hard. You know what I mean? So for those I guys, it, is, it, it, means, it means a lot to those guys. It really does. For me, man, it's like, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, let's eat it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'll participate in this. I'll, I'll front it. I'll go out there and do all the talking and stuff, man. Like, absolutely, bro. Let's do it. You know, so I mean, that's that's my that's my most honest answer that I can give you. That's a good answer, man. That's a really good answer. And we're actually having Luke Stone join us. I believe it's next week. So ask him about ask him about yeah. that, bro. Ask him well, about I that. I certainly will, man. I, I think that um, you know it's important that people know what goes into these stories. You know, I don't think people realize how much uh, sacrifice is involved just in a, a campaign that runs completely smoothly uh, for a creator, uh, let alone uh, one where, you know, things things go sour, deals are made that just don't end up going through. And and, and that could also be, uh, for example, I think a lot of creators' biggest fear is, is paying a team of people to work on a book, dropping a buttload of cash on that book only to have that team or part of that team walk out before the book's done i think that can be that can be a massive risk that, that a lot of creators run 100 and uh and you know you're talking about the time and the dedication and and then uh you know luke's case is very extreme but especially what you're putting on the table possibly uh not just at your own risk, but also the risk of your family, in a sense. Like, 
and it's it's not just your finances, but you're telling the wife and the kids, hey, this is an investment. Hundred percent. It's not even just you know you know as well as I do, specifically now. You know as well as I do. Anybody in this chat who who is married has kids, you know as well as I do. It's not just finance. It's time, bro. Like that's that's the thing I think was burned my ass about this this situation or anything else was that. I mean, I lost a lot of time. Money I can recoup, time I can never recoup. Yeah. I don't think people realize how much time you sacrifice from your children, from your spouse, yeah. um, to produce these works and stuff. And again, I'm, and, and I don't say that it means like, oh my God, I put, you know, I, I cut time. With, I don't. I'm not looking at that stuff. Yeah, it's, not, it's just it's hey, the reality. Man, it's yeah. I don't. I don't. You won't hear. You won't hear me talk about this much because I don't. But it's like, hey, this is you know. Motherfuckers ain't just sitting back there smoking joints, fucking, you know, while mm. Clayton might be back there smoking weed, drinking dope and shit. Anyway, for me, I'm over here slaving <laughs> for the way. <laughs> yeah, when I, have, when I have a cupcake party and shit, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, you know, yeah, man. You know, I, I get it, dude. Yeah. I, I give you guys credit. I do, bro. It's it's hard to just run the, 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 the campaigns, get the artwork yeah. done, and run the show, bro. Like, that's, that's why it's hard. Oh, for sure, oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, and there's a lot of creators in, in certainly that position. And, and I admire all of them. I give all of them really deep respect, because I know, man. Like, and I know everyone's family out there is like, hey, when are you gonna spend some time with us? Like, is it gonna be the when's it gonna be the next weekend? Like, because you don't have any weekends at all. It's it's funny. Uh, I just cut my lawn because it hadn't been cut for like freaking uh, like six months. It was like so overgrown, and I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna have to stop to work on Kozo for uh, bra for, for summer today and bra. do this damn lawn. That's how my mind gets. I'm like, God damn it, I gotta go. I gotta go change. Goddamn, my car's about to blow up. I'm like, son of a bitch, I gotta go fucking stop and like, change out of water. I'm like, God damn it. The whole time I'm like, I could be drawn right now. <laughs> you know and, and the whole time, you're, you're really pinning, you're really pinning it all in a hope, not necessarily a guarantee. That's the funny part. So, uh, you know, I think, again, a lot of creators props to you guys because uh, you really are doing it for the love of it, I think. But this one, nice yeah. Side. I mean, all of them are like, don't get me wrong, bro. All of them are like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, 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 again, I'm not trying to pull them out, so I'm very blessed to be able to do what I do. But, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you definitely first do it because you were, I had this epiphany the other day, and it was just like, okay, so what if it's not common? Someone asked me this. And I had to think about it, and I was like, and the reality was, is I don't care. I'm a storyteller. Where can I tell stories? Who's gonna Who's gonna allow me to tell stories? Video games, animation, books, yeah. novels, comics, movies. I don't care as long as yeah, as long as I can tell stories. Somebody asked me this other day. You'll appreciate this. My son was like, uh, when we went to a convention, I was at the convention. And he's like, oh man, look at these prints over here. He's like, how come you don't draw this character? Why don't you draw this character? Why don't you draw these prints and stuff? You know, and this came, and I said, this came out of my mouth without my permission. And I was like, well, I was like, that's because I'm not really an artist. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I'm really just a storyteller. I'm not draw. Yeah. Said, because I, I, I'm not, not an artist. Like, I could, I, but I, I was like, I have these ideas in my head mm. that a static print is not going to do what I need it to do. I need to tell stories. So that's yeah. great. I'm not going to spend all my time creating this one piece for this print. I don't want to do that. I want to mm-hmm. create stories, man. I was, you know, I'm trying to tell him that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's the deal. I said, and I, I think you appreciate that because I think you follow the same boat. It's like, yeah, I can draw. Oh, yeah, I'm man. really a storyteller. I enjoy. Like, I, I, if I had to forego yeah. my drawing to tell stories, I would. I would forego it and I would tell stories. I would For develop sure. stories all the way down and put good people on them to tell. Them. To get it done, to get to the yes, hundred percent. Any oh, any day of the week, bro. Any I'm day. sure that's your intention as well. When 100%. you can eventually afford to do it, hundred percent. That's certainly true. And you know. and in a sense, that is an addiction. Like I can't help but want to create new stuff. And and I maybe it is an ego thing, 
that I'm not content working on somebody else's creation. Mm -hmm. I'll do it maybe once or twice, but like at the end of the day, my biggest ambition is to create my own stuff and, and tell well, my own stories. You, well, because you, because you have the ability to do so. I'll tell you straight up, man, and I've done dope and I've done <laughs> pills and weed and all that kind of shit. I'm telling you right now, man, they ain't nothing compares to me talking about world building and story building, yeah. creating a story and a let and start talking about it, the developing of I'll get high off mm. that I'll straight <laughs> I, I will get high off of it. It's something it's legit to it too. that is yeah, that is that is it just starts fucking pouring out of me, man. And it's like that's what that's what drives me. That's why I'm doing it this is so important because it does. That's what why I do this is so important because it's like because it's been smoldering in me for a long time. And it's like mm. this I, I have to give it my best shot because if not, this stuff will burn me. I can't. There's no worse feeling than going, I have the story. That's what I want to do. You, 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 you know, and you have it all plotted out and you don't do it. You don't fucking make full trigger, whatever the case may be. And you're somewhere and you watch a fucking TV program. And there's mm -hmm. this idea of yours. And everybody's like, wow, isn't that a great idea? And you're like, yeah, motherfucker. I thought about it five fucking years ago. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's exactly. a great fucking idea. You know what I mean? 